Well, whilst we're setting up, um, my name is Emily. I am also doing honours. My honours research um, investigates what influences or motivates students to participate in music um, within schools on New South Wales Central Coast. Um, I'm hoping that my study will provide strategy, strategies to schools and teachers of how to better um, improve music at the schools to be more engaging, relevant, and also to um, encourage more participation in school uh, music. I'd like to introduce you to Deborah Batley. Um, she's from Karina Christian School. Um, she will be talking to you about today um, how she's used composition and improvisation activities to prepare Year 11 Music 1 um, students to prepare for prepared listening. Uh, these students uh, have a low confidence and many of these students had no formal music training since the year, year 8. So with no further ado, Deborah Batley. Thank you. So, as mentioned in my introduction, I've been working with Year 11 Music 1 this year and I've had an interesting class. They've come in and they haven't been the most confidence class I've ever taught and they've, a lot of them have had really low levels of musical literacy and a high percentage of the class have picked up music for the first time. And because of this, they've had a very limited vocabulary to describe the music that they're listening to. And so I was presented with a problem and I thought, what can I do to rectify this situation? I should have said right at the beginning that a lot of what I did was to apply the ORF training that I have. So much of what this presentation is about is seeing offshore work methodology at work in a stage six classroom. So I decided to get these kids onto instruments and improvising and composing collaboratively as quickly as possible. We're doing a unit, we were doing a unit on film music and so I found some songs that lent themselves to strong scaffolding that I could pick ideas out of and get them improvising around and then break that down into collaborative compositions. So the first piece I used was If I Rise, which is from the film 127 Hours. And this piece of music is built around this ostinato, which runs almost continuously through the piece of music. So I taught them to play the ostinato. We used it as a basis of an activity where they used call and response. So we had everyone having a turn at being the person that created the call, the class would improvise a response. We transposed the ostinato. We changed the register of the ostinato. We changed, we added beats to the ostinato and turned it because it's in sixth floor, so we tried out what it sounded like in regular four floor. We did as many things as we could to the ostinato itself and what would happen to it, just, just playing with it like a piece of plasticine. When I was confident that they had the skills to just work with it, I gave them the lyrics to the song and I formed them into small groups and said, guys, you've shown me that you have some skills in this now. Go off and come back to me with a piece of music that uses some of the lyrics of the song and the ostinato in some form. And they had 40 minutes. And I'll show you two little excerpts of what's, what came back to me because they are quite diverse and quite different. And this was actually the first activity that we did with this class. One of the kids is playing cello, I'll just warn you, and he's not a cellist, so it's interesting. <laughs> he just picked it up out of the storeroom and went, I think I'll play cello today. <laughs> so, warning there. Um, so, this is the first group, and I found it exciting because they just are clearly having fun. So that 
was the first thing that came back to me. In the room next door, something completely different was happening. So you can actually hear a bit of the other group. Um, and the video is a volunteer, so it bounces a bit. Sorry about that. <laughs> So you can see from that excerpt that two vastly different ideas came back and actually there were three groups in the class. And so it just gave them a scaffold to try out new ideas. Then we listened to the piece of music. So we did this before they listened to the music. And by doing that activity first, they had actually formed some ideas themselves about music. And these are kids that were very low confidence kids in their own skills. And so when we listened to the music, they started discussing the structure and the texture and the role of instruments in the song, and they were able to make some real observations. This is what the piece of music actually sounded like. the whole thing for you. Now at this stage their observations about the music were quite simplistic but they having done the activity definitely had some tools and vocabulary to make some observations about the music. The next further on into the term so this is four or five pieces on we did an activity based on silent sigh which is taken from the music by A Bad Boy, and it's by the artist A Badly Drawn Boy. And in this activity, we were focusing on pitch, and my goal was just to teach them about pitch in this activity. For the improvisation activity, we improvised on only the dominant and the subdominant chord, and that gave them a lot of freedom. And so I started by playing the, as a whole class activity, playing those chords just in C major, and they added ostinatos over the top of that. When that was really secure and they were thinking, this sounds really nice, again, we broke it down into collaborative compositions again, and then they added vocalisations over the top and created lovely little compositions. Again, just using ostinatos over the over the top of chords. The guitar's not brilliantly in tune, um, but this gives you an idea of what came back. just using the tonic and the subdominant of course they had freedom in that because the tonality was a little bit ambiguous and their 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 ostinados didn't have to be really tied then they listen to silent sigh which actually does move to the dominant and part of the activity when they listen to silent sigh was to actually transcribe the chord progression of the whole song and then we went back and redid the activity and they realised that they couldn't do it quite so freely with a strict chord progression and so it was a real point of learning for those kids because that at that point they learnt a fair bit about harmony and chord progressions and for a lot of these kids they did not have much understanding about harmonic function and harmonic rhythm and chord progressions and that activity 
really taught them. I think if I just played silent sigh and tried to unpack the chord progressions without the activity first, I would have gotten, no, gotten nowhere with them. I actually think the improvisation and collaborative composition activity really helped unpack it for them. I would have played you side to side, but I think I'm going to run out of time. So I'm just going to move on and sum up. So in the end, I think for what I saw over this term was that students gained a vocabulary with which they were able to really begin to make complex observations about music. In your, ha in your handouts, I've actually on page three given you, I couldn't fit it on the PowerPoint, on the presentation large enough to be read. Um, I've actually given you some work from a student. It's on the, at the bottom of page three and it's, and it's work from a student in the last week of term. And this was a student that didn't study music in year eight and it was a written response. How does a composer maintain interest in the song Bang Bang from The Great Gatsby according to the concepts of music? And this is the first thing they wrote down. The composer has juxtaposed Charleston music with a steady house beat. Trumpets and a reduced drums kit are contrasted against a very heavy bass rhythm and a harmonised, electronically manipulated voice. These concepts help to maintain interest. And that was a student who, at the beginning of the term, would have written down the bass played a drum beat against a reduced drum kit. So it was a huge improvement. And they, they were enjoying composition and coming into class saying, what composition activity are we doing today? Thank you very much. <laughs>